The Micro Machine Man here, aircraft carrier there, you can't have that, but you can't have this. The new Micro Machine Do you remember Micro Machines? Back in the 80s, it seemed like every kid had them. There were buckets full of these little things. They were featured in movies and video games. Galoob was raking in the money faster than they could pump out cars. They had one of the most memorable TV spokespersons of all time who spoke faster than any other human being on the planet. They were one of the hottest toys of the decade until they all just vanished. What happened to the Micro Machines guy? Kids of the 80s don't know his name, but they love him as the mustachioed Micro Machines Man. The guy who pitched the tiny toy planes, trains, and automobiles with superhuman speed in over 100 Micro Machines commercials. The pitch man is none other than John Machida Jr., who was, at the time, listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest talker in the world. At age 12 in his hometown of Uniondale, Long Island, Mashita heard that anyone who broke a Guinness record would get their name on television in an annual cerebral palsy telethon. He recounts the story in his own words. Well, when I was 12 years old growing up on Long Island, there was a cerebral palsy fair a few blocks away from my house, and they announced that they would donate $2,000 to cerebral palsy for anyone that broke a Guinness record. So at first I wanted to ride the roller coaster with Coney Island, so I called Coney Island and they said, hey kid, take a hike at 12 years old, we're not going to let you strap yourself into the cyclone for two weeks straight. So I went home and I started flipping through the book and decided I wasn't going to eat a car, swallow lead pipes, so the next best thing was to lock myself in a room and teach myself how to do the fast talking. I also grew up in a family with five sisters, so to get a word in edgewise, it was self-defense. Young Mashita locked himself in his room and drilled himself on tongue twisters. His favorite, he says, was... <clears throat> She stood on the balcony, inexplicably mimicking him, hiccuping and amicably welcoming him in. All right. But it wasn't until about 10 years later, during a Guinness segment on the Columbus, Ohio cable show, in which he was working as a producer and performer, that Mashita officially became the fastest talker on the planet. He nailed a recitation of You Got Trouble from The Music Man, a role he had played growing up. Talk. Friend, you are closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge. You are not aware the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Where you got trouble, my friends, right here. Say to right university. Why should my ability play? Certainly, might have per se. Most might have per se. I consider that there is a spoon with a cue in my hand, a golden, happy, cold, a bit horse, and some cool, and a keen eye. Jeff, take a truck, find the right clay, leave for yourself from a real deep shot. But just as I say, take a chance, bring to maturity, score on a book on game, and say that any boob can take a shove, any ball, and any pocket, and a call. That's walk the first week step on the road to the depths of degree. Say first, just a little, I'm just a wife, a petite spoon, then beer for model. And next thing you know, you're something's playing for money in a pitch back suit. And listen, something out of turn, just by hearing tell about horse or scandal, not a horse and truck race, nobody race with a set down right on the horse, like this is some stuck up jockey boy sitting on Dan Patch, make it both boil. Well, I should say, no friends, let me tell you what I mean. The difference between a gentleman and a bump with a couple of in that one should be in the stays of a pool. And I'll wake long university to be fritter in a way. I say, yo, you're a man, we fritter and fritter in a way. Then noontime, seven time, short time, two, get the ball in a pocket. Never mind, get down on the spool to the screen, do a patch to the beefsteak pound. And never mind, pop it any water to your pound. So go with the sister, empty on a Saturday night, and that's trouble. Yes, you got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the nick. I've got a shirt to tell young ones. Speaking in the pool hall, window after school, you got trouble. Folks right here in the city, trouble with a couple of tea, and that one should be in the stays of a pool. Now I know what you folks with the right kind of parents. I'm going to be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on with a loaf around that hole? They'll be trying to be people. They'll be trying to keep up. They'll be trying to tell them it's a cigarette. Fiends are breaking all about how they're going to come up with the hotel. Their but the reason you were put into the Guinness Book, by the way, was because you sang the song uh, "You Gotta You Got you Trouble,", got trouble. Okay. right from the Music Man. Um, can you give us a little bit of that? I'll give it a shot. I haven't done it in a while here, so let's see. Um, Freddie, the question is: a situation you do not wish to challenge. You are not worth the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Wake up, shove my friends right here. Say to a right here, university. Wash my boots, place certain mighty parts, same most mighty parts, same things. The arrows are the cool in my hand, golden hoodie, cut off horses, and cool it in Kenai. So it's a little fast to understand, but when they slow it down, <laughs> wait a minute. You expect me to buy that? I tell you what. Here's if you another. put this on a lexicon <laughs> time compressor and you slow it down, really? you will in fact hear each and every word. That's how they, they have to verify it to be a record. You know what? Let's do that. Let's slow the footage down by fifty percent and listen back. Pretty the question as to a situation you did not wish to challenge you are not worth the calibers that's to indicate that by the presence of the pool tip in your community will get some of my friends right here say to a roy in the river city where some of my place so they might put my depart same most my depart savings that the hours I spent with the crew in my hand and gold and help it kind of force things that cool it and keen eye. 
Bell Laboratories in New Jersey wanted to test his brain. Its studies showed that most people could speak just 8 to 11 words at an accelerated rate before their speech machinery started to malfunction. They didn't know why mine didn't, he said. Looking back, I think I kind of rewired my brain to be able to do it. At 583 words a minute, he was able to drop syllables five times as fast as the average person. His performance segment for Guinness led to his nickname of Motormouth. To his surprise, he started getting calls from all sorts of television executives who wanted to pay him for his machine gun speech. John ended up landing an unforgettable FedEx commercial. Okay, Eunice Travel Plans, I need to be in New York on Monday, LA and Tuesday, New York on Wednesday, LA and Thursday, New York on Friday, got it? Got it. Got it. So you want to work here, what really makes you think you deserve a job here? Well, sir, I think on my feet I'm good to figures and have a sharp mind. Excellent, can you start on Monday? Yes, sir, absolutely, without hesitation. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in conclusion, Jim, Bill, Bob, call Fred, Low, Dork, Ava, and Ted. Business is business, and as we all know, in order to get something done, you gotta do something. In order to do something, we gotta get to work, so let's get to work. Thank you for taking the meeting. Peter did a bang-up job on putting you in charge of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, perfect. I know it's perfect, Peter, that's why I picked Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's perfect, Peter, may I call you Pete? Call me Pete. Pete. There's a Mr. Schnittler here to see you. Tell him to wait 15 seconds. Can you wait 15 seconds? I'll wait 15 seconds. Congratulations on your deal in Denver, Dave. I'm putting you down to deal with Dallas. Don, is it a deal? Do we have a deal? It's a deal. I gotta go, I got a call coming in. Hi, Doc, just dealt with Don. In this fast moving, high pressure, get it done yesterday world. Aren't you glad there's one company that can keep up with it all? You got a deal, good. I'm putting you down to deal with Dick. Dick, what's the deal with the deal? Are we dealing? We're dealing. Dave, it's a deal with Don, Dork, and Dick. Dork, it's a deal with Dave, Dick, and Dave. Don, it's a Dork with Dick, Dave, and Dave. Gotta go, Dave. Disconnecting. Gotta go, Dick. Disconnecting. Gotta go, Dan. Disconnecting. Federal Express. When it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. To this day, not only is this FedEx's most successful campaign, it is the most awarded spot in the history of advertising. This success led to Minute Rice. Tonight's my turn to cook. Look what I whipped up with Minute Rice. Minute Rice Garden, Medley, Chinese Chicken, and Seafood Cacciatore. Maybe we'll move on to Mexican Beef and Minute Rice, Minute Rice and Chicken, I'm a Minute Fast, Rice and stuff. Versatile minute, minute, minute Rice. Then a little Minute Rice, scampi, stroke enough seafood salad, and sweet and sour chicken. Minute Rice, a million ways rice, to rice, serve, rice, five minutes to fix. Rice which led to the American Lung Association. Lung trouble can come from the air you breathe at work, but thanks to the American Lung Association, you can breathe a little easier. They're working to fight all these lung disease. Your lungs are a miracle. Take care of your lungs. They're only human. And if my lungs weren't in great shape, I couldn't have said all this. And ultimately led to being the face of Micro Machines. I'm the Micro Machine Man, and I'm waiting to be launched out of the sky. But first, let me tell you about another launcher, the Micro Machine's Power Launcher. With super storage for two unbelievably ultra-fast Micro Machines, simply slap it to your wrist, roll up the road, roll, ramp, pull back the power loader, then let it rip. The totally terrific Micro Machine's Power Launcher, the only way to launch a totally terrific ultra-fast Micro Machines from the Louvre. And remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. Oh! Micro Machines were a line of toys made by Galoob in the mid-1980s. They were tiny-scale, component-style playsets and vehicles that were along the lines of Matchbox, or Hot Wheels. The idea for Micro Machines was conceived by Clemens Hedin Jr. and Patty Joe Hedin in their toy shop of Fun City, USA in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, shortly after they got into the toy business. The inventors wanted to develop a new, reasonably priced car line and pitched the idea to Saul Jadell and David Galoob, who loved the idea and wanted to go to contract immediately. Under Galoob, Work was done with their model maker and designer to prepare 24 microcars in packaging. Saul Jardell and David Galoob were the masterminds behind marketing Micro Machines. It was their vision at Galoob that drove Micro Machines to become best-selling toys. Their concept to make them stand out from competition like Hot Wheels, Majorette, and Matchbox cars was apparently to make their marketing flashier, funnier, and more compelling than their competition with a focus on speed and authenticity. In 1987, Galoop found their Micro Machines pitchman in John Machida Jr. The commercials featured pitches in a trademark speedy style and ended with the slogan, Remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing! If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. Remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. The commercials took off. They were so successful that Machida filmed over 100 Micro Machine spots. Every kid in the late 80s saw these commercials on TV. They call me the Micro Machine Highway Warrior, the daringest dude on the road here to beat up the highways with these mighty Micro Machine Highway Warriors. These Micro Machine Highway Warriors are the mightiest micros ever with totally tough snap-on armor. They'll leave you in the dust. Don't pick a fight with this Micro Might. Remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. For three to four years, Micro Machines was the largest selling toy car line in the United States with total dollar sales exceeding the combined sales of the next top selling lines, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, and Majorette. Micro Machines thrived for years until September 1998 when American toy giant Hasbro purchased Galoob for $220 million. 
Hasbro essentially absorbed their competition and eventually discontinued the Micro Machines line of products. Micro Machines has been released periodically since then, but have had limited success since their original release. The original conceiver and inventor of Micro Machines, Patty Jo Hedin, no longer invents toys, and Clemens Hedin still works on toy inventions with his now wife Kay Hedin at Fun City USA in Wisconsin. Some of their other claims to fame are being the originator of Nerf Soft Dart Guns, Spider Ball, and Toddler Golf, to name a few. After Micro Machines, John had roles in Transformers. What about me, Magnus? What about me? I can help. I want to help. What about me? Absolutely, positively, definitely. Nobody can get the job done faster than I can. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Garfield and Friends. Yes? You kept me waiting for 2.9 seconds. Do you realize all the things we both could have done in that time? Here's my card. Here, I'll save you the time of reading it. I'm Supersonic Seymour of Supersonic Services, and I'm here to organize your life. And Sesame Street. Cute baby you've got there. What's his name? Alfred, Buddy, Colton, David, Egbert, Ferdinand, Gregory, Herbert, Ichabod, Jimmy, Joe, Kyle, Lyle, Martin, Norman, Oscar, Peter, Quincy, Reginald, Stanley, Thark, Martin, Ulysses, Victor, Wally, Xavier, Yarbrough, Zach. You're kidding! Tiger Games even launched an officially licensed board game based on Machida, simply titled Motormouth. A slew of other speed talkers attempted to steal John Machida Jr.'s title of the world's fastest talker, and eventually they did. Until this week, John Machida was the planet's fastest talker at 586 words per minute. This week, Steve Woodmore from Kent, England, sent a new world's record for fast talk, clocking in at 603 words per minute, more than 10 per second. The feat will be duly recorded in the Guinness World Book of Records. Although John challenges the authenticity of their claims, a Guinness editor suggested a talk-off between challengers Woodmore, Capo, and Mashita, in what Mashita says the editor called an effort to just get them out of the picture and shut them up. It went down live on Good Morning America, where Woodmore ended up being 100th of a second faster than John Mashita, but when a linguist later listened to the tape, Woodmore was found to have left an entire sentence out. And so Mashita again believed himself to be the rightful winner. Guinness suggested a rematch, and Mashita traveled all the way to London several times to make himself available. But he says Woodmore just wouldn't face him. It's something that used to give me great angst and get me really fired up, Mashita said. I mean, of course, it's a big ego thing. Eventually, Mashita moved on. I said to myself, whether I'm currently in the book or not doesn't make a bit of difference to my career. I work all around the world. England calls me. They're not hiring Steve Woodmore. During Machida's 20-year run of commercial success, he says he performed for eight presidents, the Queen of England, the Chancellor of Germany, two prime ministers of Italy, and several Supreme Court justices. Fast talking enabled me to fly all over the world first class, he says. Over time, he lost most of his bigger ticket spokesman deals, though he still works regularly in the U.S. and overseas. Mashita recently did a tourism commercial for the state of Kansas in an ad for a New York hospital. But these days, he'd be happy just to get a regular job playing the grandpa on a sitcom. It's the same old story, Mashita says. In Hollywood, you get typecast. There are a million parts I could play on TV, and the casting people a lot of times won't even call me in. To this day... I'm the fast talker. Peter Piper, pick a pick a pickle pups, a pick a pickle pups, a dig to Peter Piper, pick a Peter Piper, pick a pick a pickle pups, a pick a pickle pups, Peter Piper, pick. Micro Machines proved to be so popular that they were featured in the 1990 Christmas movie Home Alone, starring Macaulay Culkin. In the movie, Culkin's character sets dozens of Micro Machines at the bottom of a flight of stairs as a hazard for a pair of bungling burglars in the now iconic scene. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. The franchise was also ported to video games in 1991 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And in 94, a sequel was released for the Sega Mega Drive. The games were each received with fairly positive reviews, with comments of the games being charming, but ultimately repetitive and not very challenging. Even though Micro Machines are thought of as collector's items, interest in collecting Micro Machines have not reached near the level of interest in collecting Hot Wheels. One possible reason is that the toys are too new. Not enough time has passed for collectors to develop an interest. Most sets are still worth less than $5. However, for John Machida Jr., three decades later, he still gets recognized. People just come up and tell me, you were my whole childhood. 
Paris, Nadi, Los Angeles, Freaky, London, Uppity, and that's the news. Join us this day and every day at noon, two, four, five, six, seven, nine, twenty-five for the full report. This is John Machida saying good night. <laughs> It's funny how a corporate spokesperson whose only real motivation was to earn galoob money can become someone's childhood, but it's true. My best memories of Micro Machines have nothing to do with galoob, or even the products themselves, but the man I saw in the commercials, the human face, the Micro Machines guy. When I say I remember Micro Machines, what I'm really saying is, I remember John. <laughs>